so there you are, waiting in a cold exam room. The nurse rubs gel all over your belly. It's go time. The son you've always wanted is going to finally show his face in all of his glory. Images of football practice and wrestling matches cross your mind, and you look on that screen and you see a beautiful baby. Girl? Oh no. Who wants to raise a girl in today's world with, with the barrage of sexual innuendos and the old saying, with a boy you only have to worry about one penis, but with a girl, you get my drift. I've been through this situation twice where I've seen not a penis, but a lack thereof on that screen. And that screen terrifies most men. Daddy issues, also known as the daddy complex, are issues women face about skewed ideas of love and sex by witnessing poor male-female interaction growing up. Said issues can be caused by uninvolved fathers who spent little to no time with their daughters growing up, or by fathers who spoiled their daughters so much that they've developed unrealistic expectations with how to interact with men. Unresolved daddy issues can create a sense of entitlement with women and even enforce destructive behaviors. The solution to this problem would be to have a positive fatherly influence for girls growing up. And these can be seen in the pieces, Three Ways to Not Give Your Daughter a Daddy Complex by Sean Glass, Daddy Issues by Sex Tape, Daddy Issues Vlog by Trish Paytas, I Crave Male Attention by The Experience Project, and The Breakfast Club by John Hughes. Number one, be present. Too many men in their desire to provide financially for their family spend way too many hours at the office and not enough at home. Girls naturally crave male attention and affection, and the first place they look for this is from their fathers. By having, without a father around, daughters will go in search of male attention from other places, places that will not necessarily have their best interests in mind. I've got more issues than the Syrian news. I've got a credit card from Daddy that I abused. See, Daddy never came to my dance recitals. Now I feel entitled to feel entitled. Well, Daddy, look at this. Just made a discovery. A letter on the table from the state of recovery. See, I'm a little behind on the bills for my phone and my house and my store card at David Jones. Oh, and I kind of sort of totally totaled your car. Well, that's not totally true. It was my boyfriend, Jafar. Daddy, you said you'd always be there for me. Well, can you take care of my loan? It's only 20 Gs. Okay, my dad would like totally spoil me. Like we would go to Toys R Us and he would say, get any Barbie doll you want or every Barbie doll I want. And I would be like, well, I can't decide between these two. And he'd say, just get them both. Like my dad would just totally spoil me. Like he would just give me everything I wanted because he felt, he's just felt bad by not being always around. You know what I mean? So, and I think that's why like, I'm a little messed up. Like even when therapists won't say that you have daddy issues. Cause like, ew, like, ugh, like I messed up because of my dad, but like, in a way, kind of, like, I think that is why I messed up, because stuff equaled love to me growing up, and now, I think that's why I got off on men giving me money when, like, I used to strip, like, like, I felt that love. Number two, be available. This means being attentive to her needs as a girl who will eventually become a woman. Sit down and talk with her. Spend time doing things that she wants to do, and most importantly, build her up, not down. This also means giving up that Sunday afternoon football game to go dancing around with her around the house. This may mean doing a lot of things you don't like to do, all in the name of showing your daughter that you care. Fuck you, Dad, for leaving my mom. Now I can't find it in my heart to love anyone. And if I love them, I'm scared they'll abandon me, a commitment phobe with a need for codependency. It's a paradox for my daddy complex. I'm overcompensating by having lots of sex, and now I've hardly got any gag reflex. So basically, it goes like this. My dad left when I was eight, and my mom never spoke badly of him, so I wouldn't have like a bad outlook on men or my dad in general. Unfortunately, I have, for some reason, always craved male attention. And when I turned 18, the real girl with daddy issues came out, and I have had horrible, horrible relationships because of it. I find that I'm clingy, and when there's not a problem, I subconsciously will create one and then the relationship begins its downward spiral. And it's like weird, and like, as far as my attraction to older men go, like, maybe it is a daddy thing. Like, when I was 18, dating 55, 60 year old men, like, I can see now that it was kind of a, va like, a kind of a validation thing. Like, I can see now, because with the men I date, like, they legit, like, it's gonna sound effed up, but they legit remind me of my father. Like, this guy I was dating for five years on and off, like, legit, he looks like him. So, and then there was this guy I was dating, 
and he would just say, oh, I'm so, he like, he always spent time with his daughter, and I thought that was so sweet and so nice, and I told him, like, it's a good thing that you're spending time with your daughter, so, you know, she doesn't end up like me. But on the other hand, I crave male sexual attention. I'm 22 now, and I've slept with 28 different men. I've cheated on three boyfriends, and I don't even feel bad about it. It's like I crave male attention to an unhealthy point, and I don't even understand why I feel the need to have it when growing up, I never once missed my dad. In every other aspect of life, I have great self-esteem, but in the male department, you would think that I have absolutely no self-respect. Number three, be strong. Strength is required to combat the negative influences that will tell your daughter that she's not worthy enough. Many men make the mistake of just buying their daughter things instead of spending quality time with her. As the first man in her life, you will show her what true masculinity is, and she will subconsciously look for this in a mate. I can read PB&J with the crust cut off. This is a very nutritious lunch, Brian. Did your mom marry Mr. Rogers? Here's my impression of what life is like at Big Bri's house. Hey, son. Yeah, Dad. How are you today? Great, Dad. How's your day? Swell, son. Say, how about we go fishing this weekend? Great, Dad. But I have homework. That's okay, son. You can do it on the boat. Gee. Dear, isn't our life swell? Yes, dear. Isn't our life swell? Fuck you, Dad, for being an alcoholic. Now I'm an alcoholic. I apparently inherited all of your failure and all of your incredibly addictive behavior. And thank you so much for diagnosing me with ADHD at the age of three, because now I'm playing with anxiety in a Medicaid state wasted permanently. Dad, where are you now? I need money for bail. Punch a cunt on the bus and now I'm going to jail. Oh, my family? Oh, that's easy. Stupid, worthless, freeloading, no good son of a bitch, big mouth asshole jerk. You forgot ugly, lazy, and disrespectful. Shut up, bitch. Go make me a turkey pot pie. Think. Would you want your daughters to bring home a man just like you? Teach her what it means to be a great woman and cherish the beautiful creation that you made. There's a song by like John Mayer and it goes, Girls become lovers, turn into mothers, so mothers be good to your daughters. Something like that, I forgot. And I think that is so true because it goes like, Fathers be good to your daughters, and that is so true because fathers really set the bar for how men should treat you. And once again, like, my father wasn't abusive, he just like wasn't around all the time. And now, again, with men, I feel like if they give me a present or something exciting, like, I feel like that's love. And it's a little messed up. I do, I do get it. Oh, and he goes, it goes, so fathers be good to your daughters too.